So put this whole idea of referendum. I believe um, that um, there are lots of problems when we talk about um, um, open society, when we talk about um, relation between linguistic minority and, uh, and the state. And I would like to stress that when we talk about relations uh, precisely between minority and the state, not between minority and majority. It's a little bit of difference. And that people are really disappointed with the way national policy uh, was um, executed for the last 20 years. And this referendum is, uh, is not a problem. This referendum is uh, a result of problems, many problems. And um, lots of people who vote today, uh, who voted already, who will vote, um, they don't believe that uh, we really do need the second same language. Say, um, many of them believe uh, it can't be a, a lower level, for instance, um, um, or possibility to use it at the uh, municipal level. Mm -hmm. No other solutions, um, but in general, they uh, participate because they want to send a message mm -hmm. uh, saying that these problems do exist. You can't really tell that everything is absolutely okay. And uh, what I believe is what we do need is tomorrow, the next day after the referendum, is to start dialogue that uh, hopefully will result in. Uh, better understanding, at least better understanding, and uh, more of a mutual respect between people who speak different languages, that at the end of the day will make uh, Latvian society more united and Latvian state stronger. So it's, it's uh, for the people who vote, it's a protest, and for me it was absolutely clear that uh, if my supporters, my voters, members of my party participate, that I have to be together with them. What form do you think that dialogue should take place? It has to be all inclusive at different levels. I mean, politicians have to first of all start realizing that they cannot really use um, ethnic, national issues in politics. Um, that um, many people have to start realizing that uh, lots of things cannot be told publicly, cannot be. Uh, executed. Um, people have done it from both sides. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not talking about one side, I'm talking about both sides. I really liked uh, things told by Yanis Vanox. Um, before the referendum, the Russians have to understand that Soviet times wasn't really a paradise brought here by, by uh, Russians, but Latins have to understand that the Russians who live right now here, they have no responsibility for what was done by Stalin regime. And uh, it's a very good formula. It's a very good formula to start. So, I believe that people will start rethinking what was happening for the last 20 years, and if we start doing this, it's already a very good result of the referendum, per se. Um, isn't one of the problems that, that you, well, <coughs> your party uh, got the largest number of votes in, in the last election? and was not made part of the coalition, but your party campaigned in the, in the election as a kind of uh, somewhat to the left social democratic mm -hmm. party. And the other parties were uh, of a di totally different program. So the issue, uh, had your party been entirely ethnic Latvians, they still would not have fit into a, a coalition with uh, uh, Unity, Vienotiba, or uh, the Zatler's party because of the differences in program. Just as in Sweden, where everyone is Swedish and you cannot have social democrats and, uh, uh, and conservatives ruling together. Oh, uh, that's true, what you say in your question, but I believe you followed um, local press and you followed discussions for the months um, after elections, before the coalition was formed. Uh, lots of discussions, lots of debates. And you probably noticed that there were two dimensions. One dimension was about uh, right left wing on uh, pension indexation uh, 2013, 2012, and things like this. But uh, much more active debate was very clear cut whether we make Latvian coalition, Latvian coalition, or we make coalition with Homony Center. That was an issue discussed by lots of politicians from Unity. Uh, basically by all politicians from uh, East Latvia. Um, and on the other hand, uh, Zatler's party, 
they said that how many said there has to be taken into equation, not because we are left or because we are right or because we've got this and this um, um, uh, progress in our program, but because we are Russian. And the other part said, no, we are not taking them because they are Russian. And this discourse, this discussion, at the end of the day, made all voters angry. Because, well, I mean, people voted and they were not, uh, the representatives were not allowed to participate in coalition because they didn't really qualify, not because of economic issues, but because Latvian coalition or coalition with Homo Center. But, but Russian is not a political uh, ideology. Russian is a, uh, an ethnicity that can cover people of different political views, as we know. Um, yeah. So, uh, wasn't the problem that you, you now uh, are, are playing the role of a, an injured ethnic party, uh, but you were actually, one of the reasons that you would not have gone into the coalition is that you were simply programmatically different from the other parties. So you're, you're somewhere in between. Well, I mean, a party cannot be injured. I mean, we're the professional politicians, we're not supposed yeah. to be injured. I mean, it's our job. Well, you are either getting in or not, but it's it's a part of, um, of, of, of your job. Yeah, that's why translating eyes why not. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, uh, I know, but yeah, I, even yeah, eyes why not is, is, is not a proper yeah. word because I mean, I mean, we are not supposed to be injured or insulted or whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, the way discussion about Harmony Center joining a coalition uh, was uh, undertaken was insulting to our voters. Discussion about that we are not taking home the center between mm -hmm. representatives of unity and the Vislatvi because they are Russian. And Zatlas who are saying, well, we want to take them because they are Russian. That insulted our voters. And if our voters are insulted, I can't really be on the other side. And if we talk about programmatic things, well, there are certain differences. But, uh, well, trust me, uh, Vislatvi is, in many respects, as left as we are. So there were no programmatic differences. Um, um, programmatic differences between this Latvia and unity, with this respect, uh, are not really lesser. But it was told, well, we'd better, by Dombrovskis, by Abaltini, uh, do it with this uh, Latvia, because they're Latvian, Latvian. So you told, it was, uh, mm -hmm. you're concerned that with all the focus on this referendum, like so Mr. Lindemann and Zinta Valoda are kind of taking some of the political initiative away from Tasnia centers. They're, in effect, acting as a kind of opposition as well, an alternative opposition. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we always lived with uh, competitors trying to uh, uh, persuade well, Russian speaking voters to vote for them. I mean, uh, it's okay with us, we, we can survive. You w wouldn't consider teaming up with them. I mean, well, we've got a clear-cut ideology, and we could talk about um, you know, ethnical issues. We always stated that we are um, Latvian, Russian, Russian, Latvian, um, interesting or political force, and it still is a fact. It still is a fact. Uh, we've got a huge bulk of uh, bees being uh, Latvian, Latvians. Uh, we still have uh, considerable support, even even during the referendum, um, which was. Um, shown by the polls we are running that our, uh, the share of our Latin voters among overall uh, number of our supporters didn't truly really decrease. Mm. This decrease was um, basically marginal. Because people who voted for us being Latvian Latvians, they know our position about um, ethnic minorities and the way we believe ethnic minorities have to be treated. Because we always stated that better you treat ethnic minorities is better for Latvian language for Latvian culture and for, for security of this world. What would be a welcome step from the coalition politicians to make to um, to make essentially the first step towards the ethnic minorities, towards the Russian ethnic minorities? What kind of signs are you looking for to say, okay, well, they're willing to have a debate over this? Um, some things are very easy but extremely important, it's, uh, it's an issue of attitude, it's the way you speak, it's the way you um, uh, treat, you don't really, you can't really talk about, as uh, it's often told right now, good Russians, bad Russians, Russians who vote for a good Russian, um, ex excuse me, vote against a good Russians, those who vote for a bad Russians, and I mean, I hate it when I was called a good Russian, for many years I was um, presented 
Well, as an example of a good Russian, but I mean, it's, it's insulting because it means that all, in general, Russians are bad, but you're a guy who is kind of an exception. I mean, I presume you would, uh, wouldn't really like to be called a good Latvian or a good German or a good American. You can really uh, use these um, lexics when you communicate uh, with parts of society. Uh, you really have to stop uh, talking about, uh, uh, when talk about history. It is clear cut what happened in 1940, but people who live right now, they have no responsibility for it. And you have to say it very clearly. And um, so it's an issue of attitude, uh, which already will solve. Mm -hmm. And if we start dialogue, so we can talk, for instance, that, well, maybe some things can be changed. Not right now, maybe for uh, late from. Uh, but at least we discuss it. At least we discuss it. When I mean dialogue, it doesn't mean that one part talks and another part makes uh, notes. It, both have to talk and both have to listen. Did you enjoy the talk with Ravitis Dinterson, Ravitis Dinterson, uh, Neka person? Yep. Yeah. Was, yeah. was that your first public uh, meeting with him like that? Oh, uh, no, we, we met publicly quite a few times. I mean, we participated so, in different right. uh, elections. The election debates, yeah. Right. Election okay. debates, yeah. yeah. But, um, um, but the fact that we could um, talk um, in a pretty practical form, as you can, if you can use this word, um, it's also a good result. It seems kind of calm in order to uh, kind of debate. One of the uh, <coughs> figures uh, the media are focusing on is, is Mr. Lindermans. Uh, but when you decided to sign the petition for, mm -hmm. for uh, having a referendum, and you are a mainstream uh, respected politician, the mayor of the capital of the country and all that, and, 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 and people respect you, you, uh, to use the American expression, you got the ball rolling for him, and, and, and he is uh, actually a rather strange character to, to, to uh, speak of him in gentle terms. Uh, he's he's uh, um, a strange character. Uh, it's, it's difficult to disagree, uh, but um, it's not an issue about Linderman or Osipov or uh, many other guys who launched this campaign. Uh, this campaign uh, in November was supported by roughly 200,000 people who are average uh, Latin citizens, citizens, Russian speakers. As it was shown, for instance, on um, TV channels uh, last week of um, this uh, campaign, Lots of people going to sign were speaking uh, fluently Latvian, being of my age. So it means not an issue of Linderman. Linderman was kind of a, you can call him whatever freak or whatsoever, but he was just a person saying that was on surface. It's those who signed for it, those who vote right now for it, uh, they have nothing to do with Linderman. They are absolutely average persons running their average life, but being Russian speakers. Do you think there will come a time when uh, Russian will be able to be used in an official context, say in health services or local municipalities in Latgal or something? Well, I believe that uh, an absolutely uh, perfect solution that takes into account both um, rights of an average Latvian, Latvian not to speak any other language apart from Latvian, and the um, rights of uh, linguistic minority is to allow to communicate uh, with uh, local municipalities in uh, certain places, like uh, Riga, Dalvik, Uh Because um, it would be, in fact, uh, legalization of current situation. Because obviously, municipalities and the cities, in oral forms, they uh, listen to people in Russian and they, they provide um, and they reply in Russian. In written form, we, uh, for instance, in Riga, we take um, letters uh, which have something to do with the threat of security, health, uh, uh, things like this, and we, we, we take them. And basically, any um, complaint about the um, situation in the house, I don't know, a wall, probably um, with the threat of getting destructive or something like this, it's already a threat to security, and then we just, and just we take it. We just want to legalize it. Because in uh, municipalities like uh, Riga and other I don't need any additional budget to uh, introduce here in Riga a uh, system when we take letters in Russian, further on everything still occurs in Latvia 
and uh, people first run uh, get reply and in Latvian with a um, transcript uh, additional in Russian if there is um, such a need. And it would be um, an extremely important solution both from the psychological point of view because people will believe that they are a part of society, that they belong to, this, uh, to the state. Um, this uh, kind of uh, interpretation is extremely important. Plus it solves lots of um, practical issues. I mean, um, writing complaints in a foreign language, uh, in a language which is not a native about, I don't know, I can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, penalization, I mean, word of supply or um, uh, traffic is sometimes complicated. So it should be more of a practical question rather than a sort of high principle question. I mean, uh, solving this <coughs> at a practical level will be an extremely important solution um, uh, in a psychological level. I mean, in the US you can uh, pass exams, um, uh, for instance, uh, for driving license in many languages. But again, uh, well, we were not in um, the United States of America. Uh, Another example, if, you're, if you committed a crime and if you are detained or arrested, you have a right to talk in Russian. You will be provided a uh, translator. Uh, everything you will tell in oral or written form in Russian will be accepted by police. So it, right now we've got a situation that people who commit crimes, so they've got more linguistic crimes than average citizens so communicating with municipality <laughs> about uh, border supply. <laughs> But uh, I've been living in Riga for, for many years. I, I've noticed that you, you could theoretically go through the entire day speaking Russian, and you would find someone who would answer you in Russian and who would, you know, storekeepers and, and, and police and anybody. I mean, I don't see where the, where the problem arises. And in Daugavpils in places that have been uh, historically Russian, I, I don't see where the problem comes. The comes. Uh, uh, problem is, first of all, that it um, very often um, declared by politicians, politicians who run the coalition government in different combinations. Uh, so this situation you already mentioned is wrong. It has to be changed. It's bad. Well, we hate it. I mean, well, 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 we move around the city and everyone speaks Russian. I mean, it's 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 freak. Well, 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 what's happening? And second of all, as I've already told you, everything, for instance, at the level of region, well, private level, no problems for me. Private level, no problems at all. I mean, you can never understand um, uh, from a person's surname whether he's Russian speaker or Latin speaker because of the extremely high ratio of inter national marriages, one of the highest in Europe. I mean, I had um, two advisors, one of them was Pogrebniak and he was a Latvian speaker, and another one is Talens and he's Russian speaker. So, well, mm -hmm. it's, it's like this. But again, if a person comes to a municipality, it's only an issue of a goodwill of a particular person, whether he replies in Russian or not. People reply in Russian, but it's uh, just a, it's, um, an example of their goodwill, which is okay. But uh, people believe, man, is that, well, they should have this right to communicate, for instance, with municipalities. But again, I fully understand the problems of uh, Latvian Latvians. If you're a Latvian Latvian coming from Cessna to, to Riga, you can easily find yourself in a situation where you're not understood speaking only Latvian. It's true. And it's sad. And it's why Riga City Council is the only institution in Latvia which is providing uh, uh, free courses in Latvian language. Right now. None. Uh, there are no other organizations, uh, state organizations, ministries, agencies doing it like this. Only Riga City Council pays uh, for, for these courses. Uh, you, as, 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 as the, the Harmony Center party, I mean, uh, would you be open to proposing the same system that, we ha that, that one has in Sweden, as a country where I've lived a number of years, where uh, uh, there are language courses for those who don't know Swedish? I mean, it's, it's part of the, uh, well, it's, as you said, the Russians here are not immigrants in the direct sense, but it's a policy for, it, for anyone who moves into the country to be, to be instructed in Swedish for uh, that's several what, months. Well, well, that's what yeah. we do right now. That's what I you mean. do in the city, but that's not, what, that's not what the country does. But actually, I believe in Sweden, these courses are run by municipalities as well, because when I lived in Denmark, I attended these courses, and they were provided and paid by a local community. So it, it is a job for municipalities, but um, other municipalities don't do it, and state doesn't really support it, because... Do you think after this referendum maybe that it should be a signal that the state should look more into this and provide funding and, and support and encouragement to do this? And, uh... Sure, yeah, absolutely. 
Absolutely, but well, it's again an issue of trust. Courses provided by Riga City Council are highly attended. We launched on um, uh, first semester this year, opening uh, 1,130 uh, places. They were booked uh, within the first six hours. And we are adding right now money. We will have um, budget amendments in April. We will be adding more money because uh, of extreme um, uh, demand. And these people, as you know, these courses are run by Riga City Council. And uh, Mayor of Riga is, uh, is, is me who supported the referendum. People go in and, and, and uh, participate in the courses. Thank you very much. For okay, time. thank you.